know why I got you to do that. <laughs> How many of you uh, flew here today? Bunch of us. Okay, so, the, so and by the way, how many of you read the article that was published on the B1G1 blog about off, uh, carbon offsets? Okay, a bunch of you too. Um, all right, well, I'm going to share a little bit today about how to offset your carbon emissions using B1G1, and I'll take you through the story of how I came up to writing about that. Um, okay, well, we live in a changing world. Have you noticed that everything is getting... It's just changing, it's changing faster, it's moving quicker, things are happening. Have you noticed this, or is it just me being slower and not getting enough sleep? <laughs> it might be that as well, I'm not sure. Um, but there's, uh, you know, people talking about millennials, they're talking about trade wars, uh, what, deflation, crypto, all of these acronyms, um, augmented reality, Brexit, that's the one that's difficult to actually see there uh, and make out, and that's pretty much what they're going through. Um, digitization, plastic, you know, we're swimming in plastic now, and uh, climate and fake news and all this sort of stuff. I'm going to talk about those last couple uh, in, in a little while. Uh, first, a little bit about me. Uh, this is a this is what happens when you pay good money to get a reasonable photo. Uh, and, uh, the great thing about that photo is that it looks older than I really am. So I can keep the photo for 15 years. And I'm. Uh, yeah, my name is Tim. I was made in Malaysia from foreign parts. I was exported to Australia when I was about 12 to go to boarding school. I uh, studied here in, in Brisbane at uh, Queensland Uni and then uh, was shipped off to, well, worked in Australia for a while and then I was uh, shipped off to Hong Kong and uh, got out of there before they stopped liking everybody and I live in Singapore now. So I flew in from Singapore and um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about uh, climate, you know, offsetting your carbon footprint, offset, off, offsetting your, your flights and stuff like that today. Uh, last week I was in Sydney with the Dent guys and then I flew back to Singapore and then I flew back here for this event. Uh, so uh, there's a potential that you could see me as a gigantic hypocrite. Uh, uh, but what I'm going to share with you actually is I, I'm, I, like I'm savior of the world. Uh, as with some of you. Okay, so let me explain why. All right. Uh, well, first of all, this is, this is the, uh, the important part of what I, I do. Um, this is Zoe, and that's my wife, Lydia. And so she's three and a half. And has anyone watched the movie or the documentary movie 2040? 2040? It's on planes. So those of you flying about, uh, watch it. It's fantastic. The guy basically makes this documentary for his four-year-old daughter as to what the world could be like in 2040 if we implemented everything that's available now. It's already available, we can implement it. What could the world be like if we did that? And it's just a beautifully, beautifully made uh, piece. And it resonated with me because I, I've got a, a three and a half year old. And, and Lydia and I are sort of talking a little bit more about climate change. It's not what I do. What I do is, I, I, these are my clients, and I speak with them in various different parts of the world. Um, I'm a speaker for a living, so that's what I pretty much do, which is great because then uh, they pay me to talk, except for here, where I have to pay to talk. Um, so, so, yeah, so I do that in lots of different parts of the world, with lots of different size groups and various uh, bunches of people. That was, that was yeah. And, uh, and then while there, uh, filming stuff in all these different parts of the world to make programs and things like that. Um, the point of all of those slides was to say I, I fly a little bit, <laughs> and, and I'm pretty sure a bunch of you fly, some of you probably fly a heck of a lot more than me, um, but we travel about a lot, and that's the way of the world now, we, we do that. And it was, um, so I'm going to talk about how to offset your carbon emissions with B1G1, and, it, and, and I'm going to give you eight steps, because I've been spending time with the dent guys, and so they, you know, I have to have a model. So yeah, I came up with a model. So, here's, here's my model. so it's, 
Mind you, they would probably not approve of the words I'm using in the model because they're, they're, it's, but anyway. Uh, step one, quantify the problem. Okay, so I was um, sent from Singapore to Nigeria, to Lagos in Nigeria to do a keynote there for 150 people. Flew over there uh, via Dubai, uh, got off the plane at 10 or something or other, got to the hotel at 12, was on stage at 3, was off stage at 4.30, attended their cocktail function, the next day was on a plane again, flew back to Singapore. And I did say to them, Would, could I hang around and sort of check out Nigeria? And they went, no. <laughs> uh, and, and I was lying, so, because we've got an election coming up in two days, it's probably safer you weren't here. But thanks for telling me that once I got there. Um, but that was my itinerary, uh, and down the bottom there was this tiny little Thing. I was reading the itinerary, which was probably the first time I've ever read one. Um, but right down the bottom, it said, this is your CO2 emissions, was nearly 3,000 kilograms of carbon dioxide. Now, I'm not sure how to weigh carbon dioxide. <laughs> do that. I don't know how they managed to get three tons of it, but um, I really don't know. But, but apparently, that's what my seat cost. So, I was like a little bit shocked at that, so I decided, step two! The so first one is there is a problem, and I'm contributing to it. Step two, I need to uncover a solution. So I decided to do my one minute of research. It is seriously, it was, that's exaggerating, it wasn't one minute, it was much less than that. Um, I typed in how much CO2 does a tree absorb, and YouTube put out stuff in American. So I translated it, and it's, it, from pounds and stuff to one tree absorbs 21 kilograms of carbon dioxide per year and can sequester, pull it out of the atmosphere, uh, one ton of carbon dioxide in 44 years. Oh. So one tree, 44 years old, one ton carbon down. Make sense? Yeah. All right, so go and offset your carbon credit. Oh, so how do we do that? Step three, uh, we need to execute some calculations, which is why I wore this special jacket today, this is the calculation part. <laughs> so while I was sitting there, I had to make, I made some assumptions. Now the good thing about making wild calculations, and, and that being your entire piece of evidence, is that you can make some wild assumptions, be completely wrong, and it doesn't matter. So uh, I think I'm completely right until somebody shows me I'm, I'm wrong. But uh, 44 years, one ton, I'm, I'm assuming that if I plant a tree now, uh, somebody's going to chop it down in 10 years' time, it won't get to 44. That was the assumption here. So I wanted to go, well, how many trees do I have to plant, and they're going to get cut down in 10 years' time to take the one ton out uh, of CO2? And so that was the calculation. Happy to go through with you if you really, you're not going to. So, uh, but one, t one tree will absorb 55 kilograms of CO2 in the first 10 years, so I would need to plant 18 trees to get rid of my three tons of CO2 for that one flight. Okay, well, what else could I do? Well, let's have, evaluate some cost alternatives. Evaluate the cost, some alternatives out is step four. I went onto the United Nations platform. United Nations! So the good thing about them is that they'll give you a certificate if you do anything. Um, uh, all you get from B1G1 is a thank you email saying you helped change the world. So, so these guys give you a certificate, so I'd like to highly recommend them for a second. Um, uh, one of the projects is you can, uh, you can help some company capture methane uh, and combustion from swine manure. Isn't that exciting? Uh, and then there's, there was another one that I was, uh, that was $3. I thought, oh, that's ridiculous. So I went to this one, which was 28 cents. I went, oh, now we're talking. 28 cents for a ton? I can do that. Um, this was a, uh, a dam project. Uh, they built the dam in 1974, and they thought it would be great if you just paid them for it now. And I just thought, that's a bit weird. Now, I think... I think what they really secretly wanted you to do is to help them pay for a, uh, um, to, to generate power, the hydroelectric part of it. Um, and if you go in there a little bit more, they'll show you that they've already built it all. And I was just like, ah, so if I give you money now, it's not going to change the world for tomorrow. It's going to pay off your debt from yesterday. So. Thanks, United Nations, but no. So then I went on to B1G1, where I was thinking, what if I get some money to a project where they did something now 
and it started changing something from now. And I thought, well, that's it. Well, maybe from the month when the thing goes through, but from, from now-ishness. Um, and there's a whole bunch, and I just put in the word tree, it's very difficult. Uh, you have to hit advanced, I think. Uh, you put in the word tree, but I'm an advanced computer user, so I can click that button. And I put in the word tree, and a bunch came up, and I thought, 40 cents to plant a forest tree in deforested areas to reforest it in a community. And if it's a fruit tree, the fruit then uh, goes to helping income generation for the family. And do you think they're gonna chop it down if it's producing fruit? Probably not, unless they're like freezing to death. But, um, <laughs> so, probably not. And in the article, I talked about all these other things about you know solar cookers and stuff like that. But I went, oh, that's a good idea. Let's, um, let's do that one. And so step five was, well, now do something. You know, it's, it's, it's gonna be a, um, a less impactful investment of your two days if you just go out here feeling inspired and we don't do anything. So presumably you have to actually do something as a result, which is why David said us through that thing, uh, to write stuff down. We gotta do something. So step five, I decided, all right, well, I'll plant 18 trees to offset my flight. So that's eight to seven dollars 20. Can we do that? Yeah. How easy is that to do? So then I was just like, okay, well, so I'm now sitting on the plane, just like, uh, it's like I wasn't even there. <laughs> <laughs> but, Legacy's just come out, two books earlier in the V1G1 world, was Better Business, Better Life, Better World, which is how it sort of all kicked off. And one of the things uh, that I wrote in that, in my third part, was this bottom one, was add more value than you or your decisions consume. More value. So flying invisible uh, is not really doing that. So I was thinking, well, how can you do that? So, uh, well, step six, bigger fire. All we have to do is bigify. What I like about that is B1G1's embedded in the word bigify. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, bigify. Okay, so we can bigify what we just did. Now we're just thinking, how do we do, how do we make it bigger? How do we grow it? How do we do it even more? Well, that was easy. Uh, and so I came up with this idea called the triple offset. The triple offset. I can offset myself, fly invisible. Or I can do the triple offset. Now, what is the triple offset? Well, I pay for myself, so I offset myself. I offset somebody else that's on the plane. It can't be my wife because she would have to do triple offset, right? Because we're in the we're in the thing, right? We're in the, we're in the thing. We, we, you know, it's just no point me flying um, neutral or whatever, and my family are. Uh, disasterizing the world so uh, but then it's triple offset so it's me it's somebody else on the plane that's not doing it and an idiot politician <laughs> <laughs> so now the reason the reason the reason um it was, it was either him or Trump, really, honestly. Uh, but this was a stupid photo. So the, the reason why we do it for the, for the politician, he may not be an idiot, he just is not doing it, or he's not using his extraordinary influence to actually do something. I read a post from Andrew Priestley a few months ago that really just sort of cemented this idea, where he said, actually, the single most effective thing to do is to write a letter to your politician. And if enough of us do that, we're going to start to let them know that we care about it so they, instead of, instead of stroking coal in parliament, they actually probably do something. So, um, so the reason for that third one is to annoy you enough that you're paying for it to write the letter. <laughs> that kind of makes sense? Yeah. And even, even if nothing happens, we're, we're actually climate positive, not climate neutral. What the world needs is more people to be climate positive. Fair enough? Yeah. Okay. Uh, but what about the elephant in the room? And this is the elephant. Well, that's the elephant. I don't know if you can see it. But it's there. Now, <laughs> it's, um, so step seven is elephant elimination. Now, don't go get your shotguns and charge up in Africa and wipe them all out. This is the elephant in the room idea elimination. What is the big elephant in the room? Well, what if climate change is fake? So isn't that the, is that what some people are arguing that? Uh, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Okay, well, uh, 
This uh, exhibit A, this is the Singapore Prime Minister about a week and a half ago doing a national address on television and to all the ministers uh, articulating what the roadmap is for Singapore. Singapore is in a unique, a unique position where they can talk about a 20 year, 100 year, he was talking about in this one, roadmap, and they know that they will deliver it because there's not an opposition that's going to get them out. So, well, there is, but it's, it's, these guys are, are doing well. So he said he, he, he was talking about climate change. As a politician addressing the nation, talking about climate change, I thought it was fantastic. And he said that Singapore is in a difficult position insofar as if the seawaters rise, th those pinkish areas in that picture are the flooding that would happen in Singapore. Um, and I used to live uh, here, but I've since bought a place on a hill <laughs> in the middle. So I was lucky, I didn't really think about it at the time. I was always annoyed that at the train stations, you would always have to go up six steps before going down the escalator. And I thought, this is so bad engineering. Why don't they just have no steps and a smaller escalator? And it's stupid. Well, it's because of the flooding. They built it so that the train stations wouldn't get flooded. I mean, they, they're sort of thinking that these guys have fantastic. Anyway, he said with climate change, we need to understand it, to understand what it really is, mitigate it, which means do something about it. And then he added, which I love, we need to be doing something so that when we tell other people to do something, we're doing it with authenticity and legitimacy. <coughs> not just going, you know, people should do this and we're not doing anything. And then adapting to it, which was, and then he started giving a 50 to 100 year plan, talking about $100 billion required um, by Singapore to mitigate, to build walls and barriers and stuff like that. And they'd studied the Dutch as to how they'd done it. And there was a whole bunch of really cool stuff. So he, he was talking about exhibit B, check, check this out. This is the global temperature change since 1850, little animation. Staying about the same. <coughs> now, 19, Second World War. <clears throat> Last 20 years, huh? Getting crazy. So we need to do something. That was kind of the idea. Uh, exhibit C, this is the uh, elephant eliminate. If you're really not at any point, this is, this is where we just take action regardless of its effect or not. Check this out, okay. Uh, this is my very, very uh, high, high, I'm going to go down here. I don't know why I'm going to do that. I'm going to go over here instead. Um, all right, so this is the elephant eliminator. If climate change is true and we do something, check this out. We save the world. That's pretty good. Now, if it's fake and we do something, like plant trees and fruit and all that sort of stuff. Um, oh, no, sorry. If it's true, if climate change is true and we do nothing, we kill the world. Okay, well, that's pretty good. Now, how about this? If climate change is fake and we do something, we help the poor. That's pretty good. So, so it's like, fake, you stupid idiot. I won't, I won't, I won't help the poor, I plant some trees and they're all good. Yep. And, and if it's fake and we didn't do anything, all we can do is be smug. <laughs> so, it's like, aha, I knew it. So, so on this side, if we do nothing, we either kill the world or we be smug. And on this side, if we do something, we either save the world or help the poor. I kind of like this one. You like that one? Again, get, tell the person next to you, give them a high five if you like that one. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right, here's some other random objections. Oh, trees. Trees are only 25% of the carbon you know, out of the thing. It's the oceans that do it. 75% come from this guy. That's plankton from SpongeBob. <laughs> uh, it's plankton. So if plankton is the thing that's going to produce the uh, to, to reduce the carbon dioxide and oxygen and stuff, how do you help plankton do that? I don't know. I know how to plant a tree. <laughs> there is a way you can help plankton. You can eat whales. <laughs> Let's kill the whale. We're not going to kill the whale. Maybe we should go back to planting trees. <laughs> So, okay, let's go back to the blinding tree. That makes this a little bit unacceptable. Yeah. Right? And to go, well, I'm not going to accept your aid until somebody apologizes is just a height of idiotness. I mean, honestly. But that's what we, why we have to write letters. So, um, so Amazon, not, not the best of health at the moment. I don't know if that's fake pictures or whatever. It doesn't matter because we can either save the world or help the poor. Okay? Uh, so how can we easily do something? A step eight, easify positive action. We have to easify it. 
Okay, here's how we easify positive action. Uh, well, I did some more numbers. <laughs> now, if you want to know how not to give a presentation on stage, it's like this. Now, if you look at... <laughs> But what this is, is every type of aeroplane, this goes for about 200 lines, every type of aeroplane that's flying at the moment, their uh, liters per person per seat of, of fuel usage, working out the CO2 emissions, and my final column here is how many trees are required for a flight of, in this particular one, 560 kilometers. Anyway, I did it all for you, um, and it basically came, I, I gave up on a few lines, because they were just like, not important. I went for the, the worst case scenario of everything, and I pretty much, this is the number of trees, what I wanted to do was work out, to easify it, how many trees do I have to plant per hour I'm in the air? Because how long is a flight from here to Melbourne? You know that. What's your CO2 emission? I don't know. Yeah, two hours worth. But I don't know. Everybody, how, what's the distance exactly? I don't know. But everybody knows it's two hours. So let's use the thing that everybody knows. Flight from here to Singapore, seven hours, whatever it is. So you kind of know. So I went, well, how many trees per hour? Uh, most of us are short, medium, long haul. If you look at that, it basically, in the triple offset, works out to somewhere between three and four trees per hour. So how about this? We plant four trees per hour every hour in flight. Wow. Is that easy? <laughs> then, on the B1G1 side, you create a giving story. This is what I've done. And that, I was inspired by Paul, but Paul did it. He read the article, he did it, and I went, damn it, I was supposed to do it. Anyway, I did it. <laughs> but now, now it's, when we fly, we triple offset every flight hour when we plant four trees, the forest trees, to help restore the environment. And then when you go on a flight, so, so, like I said, I went to Sydney, and then I went back to Singapore, and I came back here, but I'm triple offsetting. So because I did all of that irresponsible travel, I made a bigger impact than if I hadn't. And by the way, to get here, I flew from Singapore to Melbourne, then from Melbourne to Brisbane. I don't know why I did that. And then from, and then uh, got a lift, um, thanks Chris, um, to here. But because of that, m more impact happened, positive impact happened than if I hadn't flown, I think, because of triple offset. Isn't that cool? Yes. By the way, just from a just from an understanding flights thing, the reason uh, long haul flights, by the way, long those really long ones like Sydney to Los Angeles, they have to carry all the fuel for the flight, mm -hmm. and so there's this sort of six thousand kilometer sort of uh, optimum point where if it's going to go beyond that, the plane should land, refuel, and then go again, <laughs> and it's going to be less carbon emissions than having to carry all the fuel and and pay for fuel to carry the fuel. Uh, on those long-haul flights, which is why when the when the fuel prices went up, they cancelled all those flights because it was going to cost them too much in the fuel load. And then now they're all back again. Okay. Anyway, create a giving story. Is that easy? Yes. How easy is that? Yeah. Turn the person next to you and go, that's so easy, I'm going to do it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so so here, the, uh, here are the eight steps, and I'm going to wait until you see it. Tell me what you see. What a method! <laughs> what a method! Who saw? Who said it? Queen bee. Queen bee. Who can see the queen bee? Yeah. Isn't that cool? Yeah. That's why I had to change all the words. It was much simpler than that. <laughs> <laughs> Quantify the problem, uncover a solution, execute the calculations, evaluate cost alternatives. Now do something. Bigify it. Triple offset. Elephant elimination. Just. Work out a way to go, well, it doesn't matter if it's right or wrong, let's do it anyway, and then easify positive action, like bring it down to its lowest, easiest to understand common denominator, four trees per hour that you're in the air. And that was in case you didn't get it, but luckily you did. Um, here's your challenge. Now I'll set your carbon footprint for everything else. Remove flights from the calculation, because you already know how to do that and do everything else. In that article, the B1G1 thing, there's a couple of links to all these places where you can actually do that, and that's up to you. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Is that something that's doable? Yeah. You can put that down as an action. Yeah. And I think that's it. Hey. Yeah.